Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of History Saver right here on YouTube. Thank you for joining me and a very, very special review tonight. Um, I don't know if you will call this a rational review, but we are reviewing some World War II era chocolate. Now, some of this chocolate you see before you is original and most of it is not. Most of it is reproduction. But it's the same type of chocolate they had during the war. And I have three different countries represented here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have Germany, the United States, and the Canadian forces. Now, all of this chocolate was in use during World War II. This is what the soldiers were consuming on an almost daily basis. Uh, this is some of the more popular items during the war. And on the right side here, we have Germany, which you'll see right off the bat, the Coca-Cola, which you've seen on the channel before, if you watch my channel. Now, the Coca-Cola is a, um, it's a very dark chocolate. And what they, you know, the ingredients of this stuff will blow you out the water if you eat too much of it, honestly. It's basically coffee in a chocolate format. It was made with coffee and the cola beans. And it's a caffeinated chocolate. Now, the tins have changed from World War II until now. They haven't changed much. They've kept almost these, the um, a similar pattern of the World War II cans uh, for reenactors. I highly suggest getting a period can for this stuff. They're easy to find, uh, but they are, can be expensive. But you can take, <clears throat> excuse me, they actually have stickers that you can take um, and cover these cans with that they reproduce. And the stickers are copies of the original World War II uh, can stickers. So you could take a modern can, just cover it with that uh, sticker, and it will look like an original can besides the writing on the side. Of course, they didn't have websites during World War II. So I recommend getting rid of that or just getting another can and doing it. Or better yet, buying an original can. They're out there. You just... You know, need to afford it. Uh, but anyway, the Shoka Cola chocolate was made with a col uh, coffee bean and a cola bean. It's a very dark chocolate. And we're going to open this one up right here. And you can see a little piece of paper comes out, covers it. And that was also in use during World War II. And this has 16 pieces of chocolate in it. And as you can tell, the chocolate is very dark and it is very strong. Um, one just half of a piece of this will do you for one serving because the stuff is very strong and a lot of times you know that's what the soldiers will do is ration this out and that's what these lines <clears throat> one of the reasons why the lines on it is there so you can actually bite down and just take a little piece we're going to take a little piece of this one um the chocolate's very good i love this chocolate but it's very dark you have to be a dark chocolate lover and a coffee lover to love this um there's 16 pieces in this can. Um, just a little bite like that will do you. You want to ration this chocolate out because you never knew when you were going to get more. So you know, a lot of guys would, and they'll take this and make hot cocoa with it. Um, put a piece in coffee sometimes. I mean, it's just all kinds of things you can make from this. Um, another thing that we have here is coffee conserve. Now this is a reproduction from Wars in, uh, Wars in Shop or Craig's uh, Craigson Militaria. A great place to get some reproduction World War II ration items, especially German stuff, because the German stuff is harder to find. But this is something new he come out with at, at the Stalingrad event. Um, is where he introduced it just a few weeks ago, and basically this is cr black crack in the tube is what I like to call it. Because this stuff is so addicting. It's so good. Um, but if you don't like coffee, you're going to hate it. If you like coffee, you'll love it. Um, it is, again, very strong. And they would have come in original tubes that will look just like this. Um, Jeff over at Ward's End Shop does a outstanding bang-up job. He's one of the best in the business, if not the best in the business. And he is the only one that has this coffee conserve reproduced like this. And yes, it is edible. There is some inside. We're going to take the top off here. It's just like a little toothpaste uh, toothpaste tube. Basically, it's the same as that thing. Um, but we're going to take 
and pull some out. You can see it right there on the end. It does not look appetizing as it comes out, but I guarantee you this stuff is. You take a little bit on your finger or just squirt it in your mouth, and there you go. Um, very good taste. It's a mixture of chocolate and coffee. Um, he made this, I think, with instant coffee, which is what it tastes like, and made a paste out of it. And it's basically a coffee paste is all this is. And it was developed to keep the soldier going. If you can't have a hot cup of joe, um, the German soldier could get one of these, have it, a little square to do him. It's a little, um, it's got chocolate in it, so it's a little sweet. And it's got coffee in it, and it's got enough caffeine in this thing to let him go all day long. And this actually has seven cups of coffee inside of it. So pretty cool. And I like these so much, I picked up five tubes of it. Got them in yesterday. You can see I've already been eating on that one. I couldn't help myself. This is black crack in the tube is what I nickname it because it's just like that. It's so addicting. If you like coffee and chocolate, this is crack. And, uh, I mean, it, it's awesome. Now, um, we're going to move on to the United States here. This is a United States Marine Corps Field Ration D. This is four ounces of chocolate, um, 600 calories. It's got chocolate, sugar, skim milk, uh, cocoa butter, oat flour, artificial flavoring, uh, 0.45 milligrams of vitamin B1. And it's to be eaten slowly in about a half a cup and about a half an hour. Uh, can be dissolved by crumbling into a cup of boiling water if desired as a beverage. And we're actually going to do that. Um, this is reproduced by a good friend of mine. He uh, reproduced these, but they will look exactly like this. He took a copy of an original, reproduced this. Wax the box just like they would have been, and that wax coating on a box is to help waterproof it, make it last longer. And uh, he does a very, very good job with this. And he also makes the chocolate uh, inside of this, reprodu reproduces the chocolate. You can see it's missing a piece. I've also eaten on this one. Sorry, guys. Can't help yourself sometimes. But um, they would come out in six cubes. You have three cubes here, three cubes on the top. And it's kind of a... Let's break a piece off. There we go. You just break a piece off just like that. And uh, it's kind of got a flakiness to it. Um, kind of crumbles. And there's a good reason for that. We have a cup of hot water here or some hot water. Um, I put it in the coffee maker. And we're going to take this and actually let's taste it without doing it first. Oh, yeah. Very grainy. Very nice. And you can take it, drop it in a hot cup of water just like that, and give it a few minutes, break it apart some, and make a nice hot chocolate drink out of that one cube. And now it does take a little while for this to dissolve in there. And it may not look like hot chocolate, but it does, the taste does resemble hot chocolate once it's done. We're going to let that sit for a minute, and hopefully the heat will build it a little bit. Set that to the side. And, you know, this was made by the Hershey Corp uh, Corporation. And Hershey made that ration for the United States Marine Corps. It was a tr uh, used to be made uh, to use in the tropics. And they used a lot of it. So, pretty neat when you think about it, you know, how chocolate <laughs> was able to sustain a guy uh, for a few meals. So, chocolate is a pick-me-up. It helps out a little bit, um, especially if you're in a crunch and you're hungry. Well, chocolate's a go-to. And you're going to find this out in this ration. This is a Canadian Survivor ration. Yes, you have seen one of these on the channel before, but we're going back over it again because it's been so long. Now, this was processed by W. Clark Limited in Montreal, Canada. And um, again, on this tin as well, it says this is a concentrated food and should be eating eaten slowly. It contained 12 biscuits, uh, which is regular cracker biscuits, or if you want to call it, two chocolate ration bars, 12 milk chocolate tablet rations. So this thing is packed with chocolate. This is an original ration from World War II. And you'll take it open it by using this key. This key was on the bottom here. And also you can see the stamp on the bottom of the ration there. There we go. If I focus in, 31845 looks to be the number on this. And we're going to take it off. You can see the inside of it looks great. A little something right there, but that's okay. We've previously opened this ration. 
Um, but it's still here and intact, and I want to try to keep this ration intact. And you get your ration biscuits out, processed by Harrison Brothers Limited in Montreal, Canada. And these are basically crackers. Now, I'm not going to take these out. Um, we'll give you a sneak peek, though. There you go. There's the crackers on the inside right here, as you can see. And now yeah, let's pull one out. I think I can. There we go. There's the cracker there. And basically just a little wheat type cracker. And we'll take a <laughs> we'll take a little bite. It's still pretty crunchy after 70 years. Um, it doesn't really have a whole lot of taste to it. it. Looks like it may have some sesame seeds and different grains inside of it. But it does taste like chocolate because it's been in the box with chocolate for so long. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing what I just done. Um, but anyway, we're going to cover that back up. I want to keep this intact. This is an original ration. Not many of these floating around anymore. Um, and I want to keep this for as long as I can. Now, you also get 12 milk chocolate tablet rations in here. And it says on here, concentrated food can be eaten slowly. Uh, packaged by Flominion Packaging Limited in Montreal, Canada. And these milk chocolate tabs come out. They look like fish. You get two tubes of these in here, which this one was already open for a previous video. We're just going to take it out and take a look at it here. Now, it's got some white residue on it. Not for sure what that is. Um, not sure if that's normal or not, but we'll find out. Um, and this could be dropped in a cup of water as well or something like that or just eaten like this and dissolved in your mouth. And it was made to give you some vitamins and basically just to give you a pick, pick you up, especially if you're hungry. Chocolate, man, is, is a go-to food apparently during World War II. Um, what the heck? We'll... So you can bit, we bit off a little corner right there, just a little bitty piece. Huh. It's got a slight chocolate taste to it, not too much. I'm not going to eat this whole thing just because I don't want to die. All right, a little piece won't hurt us, but we're going to stick this back in the pack and preserve it. And we may send this off to someone else to enjoy. I'm going to take, of course, the ones I bit off out if I do that. Um, but you got two little packages of this. And then on the end of the ration here, you have two lifeboat and raft ration chocolate bars. Now, this is original chocolate from World War II. Um, this is given to the Canadian forces in 1944, and that is what this ration is dated, is 1944. And you can see the chocolate right here on the end. And it's a little grainy. Um, again, I don't want to destroy this ration because it is original. But the writing on the back here, this chocolate will soften when the heat is excessive and on cooling down, it may have a white surface. The whiteness does not affect the eating quality of the chocolate and it still retains its food as full food value. Product of Fry Cadbury LTD, Montreal, Canada. Um, so there you go. Let's, let's see. I'm just going to... Mm. Wow, still has a good taste to it. Still tastes like excellent chocolate. Very chocolatey taste. It actually tastes pretty good. Um, I just bit a piece of the end off right there. Um, not taking, again, I'm not taking a big bite of this. But just enough to braise off to get a taste of it. And this actually still tastes fine. You could probably eat this, but I wouldn't recommend it because it probably has milk in it. It's over 70 years old. And I really don't want to go to the ER tonight, uh, especially with shoulder injury already, again, after eating 70-year-old chocolate. So sometimes you draw the line. Anyway, this is the Canadian Forces ration, and this was made as a survival ration. It should only have been eaten when it was majorly needed. If you're in trouble, pop it open. You have a ton of chocolate with some biscuits. So, yeah, pretty neat to see that. Now we're going to get back to our cup of chocolate here you can see it's softened up a little bit it doesn't look much like hot chocolate let's see if we can change it here 
but this chocolate is very good this is a uh, not an original chocolate this is a reproduction this is chocolate that he made for these rations a good buddy of mine um, Michael if you're watching this video thank you again for um, doing these for me he made me a couple of these and uh, man these things are absolutely gorgeous but you can see it water has to be really hot to crumble it up it's starting to look like something here and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, uh, a couple of big pieces in there but you can see it doesn't look like much of hot chocolate just kind of water down a little bit but we're gonna taste this and see how it tastes oh man that is really really good and then you can just of course take some chocolate on a spoon soften up still has a great taste to it this is extremely good oh very good chocolate but guys this stuff is what oh give me a minute here <laughs> this stuff is what uh basically helped preserve the soldier during world war ii as far as food wise chocolate was found in every single rationing of every single army that fought during World War II, even the Japanese. And uh, Russian chocolate, um, that's a little bit harder to get your hands on, and I haven't been able to find any yet, but one day I hope to get some World War II Russian chocolate. Um, also, um, from War's End Shop, Jeff sent over this. That's kind of a freebie with the order. Thank you again, Jeff, at War's End. And guys, if you want anything World War II related, um, if you're a living historian, reenactor, whatever, you're look or a collector even, and you're looking to uh, build some stuff on your kit, I highly recommend WarsInShop.com. Here's a card right here. Uh, Jeff is a heck of a nice guy at Crescent Military. He'll help you out with whatever you need. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is original or reproduction. But Jeff sent this over as a freebie. It's a German lemonade powder uh, package, basically a Kool-Aid package for lemon powder or whatever. And uh, pretty cool design on the front of it there. And uh, thank, uh, thank you to him for sending that over. I'm going to enjoy this. Um, it's going to be a definitely an added part to a personal kit. But guys, thank you for watching the video. As always, um, thank you to everyone who supports the channel, everybody who uh, comes on here and supports what we do. Um, Got to give a big shout out to John Magnum. Thank you, uh, Magnum, for all your support. Um, Wars in Shop, guys, go visit them online, warsinshop.com. And pick up some of this stuff for yourself. Try it out. Even if you're not a reenactor or whatever, try some of this stuff out. Pick it up. It's uh, very interesting to uh, try out for yourself. So thanks to all you guys for all the support you give me on the channel. Like, share, and subscribe to the video. Share it with your friends. Help build the channel up. I want to build the channel up a little bit. Get a lot more subscribers. And we will see you on the next one. So thanks so much. We'll see you soon.